Hello, this is Alberto Blanco Justicia from Universidad Rubira Virgili, and I'm going to present our work on Coyotal peer-to-peer -peer decentralized computing. The talk will be structured as follows. First, I'll provide an introduction, including some related work. Then I'll go on to the concept of uh, coutility. That will be followed by our contributions on generic computations and on federated learning. Then I will talk about our results and I'll finalize with a summary of our conclusions and future research. Outsourcing some computation tasks to more capable entities or to a network of peers have brought supercomputer-like computational capabilities to end users. One example of this is cloud computing, but we can also find examples of decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer architectures. For example, uh, the SETI at home project. The most recent example of this uh, outsourcing of computations is uh, federated learning, where a centralized entity can offload the training of machine learning models to the end users, where these use their privately held data to train the models for the central entity. Outsourcing computations in this way, however, may lead to trust uh, problems between the task requesters and the peers. On the one hand, this may lead to privacy issues where the task requesters learn too much about the uh, peers involved in the computations. And on the other hand, this lack of trust, these trust problems may lead to uh, correctness issues, so the requester may not be able to ascertain whether the computations were carried out correctly. We focus in this work on guaranteeing the correctness of computations. In order to guarantee the correctness of these computations by peers, some works propose verifiable computing. The simplest form of verification is achieved by replicating the task. So the requester sends identical tasks to multiple peers and it only accepts the result which is reported by the majority. This, however, may lead to serious overhead problems. Other approaches resort to mathematical proofs of correctness. Uh, this verification should be easier than recomputing the task itself. And initially, these proofs this proof required uh, very expensive uh, constructions but recently, more efficient solutions have been brought to, to verifiable computing. Among those is, for example, uh, SNARKs. These proofs, however, are ad hoc, so different proofs have to be constructed for different problems. Our goal here is to achieve a verifiable computation for any kind of computation. For federated learning in particular, uh, some proposals uh, use uh, blockchain to manage reputation of peers in, form, in the form of uh, money. Our proposal is similar in the spirit to this proposal in the sense that it also uses decentralized reputation, but it does not uh, rely on blockchain. And so, in this work, we revisit the approach to verifiable computing via replication under the perspective of coutility. We also use decentralized reputation as an incentive to uh, peers to compute correct results. And we first give a protocol for generic computations in which the requester sends the peers the code and the data. And then we also give a second protocol for the case of federated learning, where the requester does not know the data in which the models are computed. Coutility models interactions between rational agents, where the best option for each of the agents to reach their own goal is to help other agents reach theirs. A protocol is coutile if it's self-enforcing, that is, if a peer engages in the protocol, it will not deviate. The utility derived by each agent participating is strictly greater than the utility the agents would derive from not participating. And there is no alternative protocol giving greater utilities to all agents. 
In our proposal, a requester can delegate the computation of some task to the peers in a peer-to-peer -peer network. The protocol is designed with the following goals. First, decentralization. The protocol should not rely on a central authority who might, on some cases, be self-interested. Then, anonymity. Requests and computations and accountability management do not rely on the identities of peers so that we can thwart collusions. Then, we expect a low overhead on managing reputations. We also aim for a proper management of new peers so that peers that have low reputations cannot create new identities to whitewash themselves. And finally, peer symmetry or asymmetry. So peers that request computation may, may be peers from inside of the network or an external peer. Under co-utility, executing requests for others or performing accountability management are negative utilities for all but the requester. Rational agents would in principle have no incentive to, in, to execute these tasks. To enforce co-utility and sustain the protocol and the correctness of the computation, we rely on reputations. On the one hand, this reputation will allow peers to build trust, and on the other hand, it helps holding peers accountable for their actions. In these manners, free riders and also malicious peers can be identified and penalized. To manage the reputations, we rely on an extension of eigentrust which fulfills the design goal we defined above and is robust against rational attacks. The protocol consists on calculating a global reputation based on aggregating local opinions of the peers that have interacted, interacted among each other. And so, let R be the requester, that is the party which wants some task computed by the network, and we assume that R has a list of the pseudonyms of the peers. The requester splits the computation into a number of tasks, each of them including the code and the data needed to execute it. Then, if we have some global reputations available, we choose a number G, which is the replication factor, which results from applying the gamma function on the reputations. This gamma function will give us smaller numbers when a high number of peers have big reputations. Then R selects a number of peers with the highest reputation among those that are available. In case we don't have these reputations available, we just choose a random set of peers. M times G is the number of tasks times the minimum replicas for each task we want. Next. R computes and publishes a random permutation of these tasks and assigns it to available peers. Once the peers have completed their task, they submit their results. Next, the accountability managers, where each of them is responsible for a set of peers, checks the results submitted by the peers they are in charge of and the peers that had the same task as he does. Then, after checking the results, if the peers they are in charge of have given a result equal to the majority result, they increase their reputation, otherwise they assign a zero reputation to that. After this is completed, we call protocol 2. This protocol 2 computes the global reputations from the local opinions of the accountability managers. The accountability man managers iteratively compute a, rep a global reputation TD by aggregating the opinions of the other accountability managers weighted by the opinion on the accountability managers. These iterations are repeated until the global reputations converge. And then, regarding the co-utility of the protocol for the computations are and for the management of reputations, if we assume most peers to be honest and let reward i be the total reward earned by each peer, for correctly performing a computation whose cost is cost, then if this reward is bigger than the cost, then protocol 1 is co-utile. The details can be found in the paper. For federated learning, in the simplest case, the local data of peers are provided by the requester. 
If that's the case, and the requester also provides any randomness used during training, then we can use protocol 1 to ensure the correctness of the models computed by peers. However, if the data is not provided by the requester, but the peers use their locally private data, protocol 1 is not suitable. We propose protocol 3 to deal with these cases. In this protocol, the requester, as in the previous case, selects the highest reputation peers from the network, in case the reputations are available. Otherwise, he will choose a set of random peers. The requester sends the model parameters to all peers in the network. Then the peers compute their updates using their local data, and then send this update to the accountability managers. The accountability managers then perform outlier detection based on the distance from the updates to an average update and build a set lambda including all of those peers which are not outliers. Then the accountability managers assign a reputation of 1 to these peers in the set and a reputation of 0 for those not in the set. After this we call again protocol 2 to update the global reputations of the network. Again if most peers are honest and the rewards are bigger than the costs, then this protocol is time. To get results on the performance of the reputation system and the redundancy required to obtain correct results from the tasks given to the peers in, in the network, we implemented protocol 1 and use it for two types of tasks. The first type is tasks with a binary result and for, for those the correct result is recovered only if there's an absolute majority of correct results. In this case, malicious peers that return incorrect results, all of them return the same. On the other hand, tas tasks with non-binary results uh, are, are such that the malicious uh, peers do not always return the same result, but just an incorrect one. And so the, cor the correct result is recovered as long as it is the most frequent one. So taking this, in, this into account, we measured the quality of the results as followed. We counted how many of the tasks assigned in each run of protocol 1 were such that the correct result was the most frequent among all the redundancy uh, tasks returned. Then we defined the quality of the results as the previous count over m, so over the number of at assigned tasks. In here we see such quality for binary tasks on the left when we choose peers at random and on the right when we choose peers based on their reputation. As we can see for binary tasks when we do not have reputations available the more redundancy the better and we get better results when g is 9. Up to half of the peers being malicious. On the other hand, when we have reputations, we see that for g equal 3, so for a redundancy of 3, we have robust results up until half of the peers behave correctly. So reputations allow, allow us to have less redundancy. For non-binary tasks, similar behavior appears. So having a redundancy of 9 when we don't have reputations available gives us the best results. But once we have reputations available, G3, so a redundancy of 3, gives us the best result. So the reputation system in here allows us to decrease the redundancy of the, ver the verifiable computing. In the federated learning case, so using protocol 3, we use the public MNIST dataset to train a handwritten digit uh, recognition. We have 10 peers in the network and split the dataset equally among all of them. We carry out two types of attack. One, we can random attack, which are also known as Byzantine attacks, which try to prevent the network from converging. We also tried poisoning attacks that try to make the network misclassify one of the classes into another one. We run these experiments for three times, each of them updating the reputations according to the behavior of the peers. So for random attacks, 
So in here we can see that the, in the first task, when we still don't have reputations, the model cannot convert. So the random attacks exceed. This also happens for the second task, but it takes a bit longer for the attackers to complete their objective. However, on the third task, when we already have the reputations for peers, the final accuracy for the learning task equals the baseline accuracy, which represents training a network with no attackers. In the case of poisoning attacks, we have similar results. So in the first run, when we still don't have reputations available, we can see that the global accuracy of the model is close to the baseline accuracy, but the class 4, which is the one that is being attacked, has a lower accuracy. That means that the attack is somehow succeeding. This accuracy for the class 4 decreases in the second and third tasks, meaning that the attacks do not succeed. And finally, to conclude, we can see that co-utility can make correctness in decentralized computing sustainable, requiring less redundancy than when not having reputations available. This decentralized reputation is a powerful incentive to achieve co-utility, and we have shown that using two protocols, one for generic computations on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer setting, and the other one for federated learning. Future work will aim at improving the robustness of reputation-based federated learning against more sophisticated poisoning attacks. Thank you for the attention and goodbye.